these 40 dwellings. And out of those 40 dwellings, 20 of those contain uh, 12 kW ranges. Okay. What they're looking for here, this is a three-phase service. And they're asking for the net equivalent demand on that service for those ranges. There's another variation of it that's the same exact question, but it's 10, uh, it says 20 dwellings, 10 of them have ranges, but it's still the same math. So when we're dealing with a three-phase service, the calculation on this uh, particular range question is you're going to take the three phases and you have to figure out how to evenly distribute or the best you can the ranges that you have across those three phases. So in this case since we have 20 of them, the only way to, to get those closely balanced out is to put seven on one, seven on another, and six on another. Seven, seven, and six. That means that between A and B, between B and C, and between C and of course A, you have seven, seven, and six. Then you're going to take the largest group of ranges, which in this case would be either one of the sevens, the same difference. So we're just going to pick one of the sevens, doesn't matter which, and that we're going to multiply times two. Okay? You multiply it times two so that we capture both A phase and B phase, or whichever the two phases they happen to be on. So the net equivalent then means that we have 14 ranges essentially rated at 12 kW between two phases. Or it takes, takes both phases or takes both phases into account. So 14 ranges at this point then at 12 kW allows us to then go to the table and find a demand factor for those 20 ranges. That's it. Range for those 14 range, excuse me. So looking on 220.55 on page 66, we are then going to pick the demand load from that number, which 14 ranges under column C is 28 kW. So the net equivalent for those two phases then, 14 under column C is 20, what does it say, 8? 29. 29. 29. Well, that's pretty bad. I, need, I really do need a cup of coffee. So, now bear in mind that that 29 kW is the net equivalent on the A phase and the B phase that we just calculated. We still haven't really accounted for C phase yet, however. So what we need to do is figure out what this is per an individual phase and then multiply it times three to give us the net equivalent for all three phases. So I'm going to divide that by 2. So 29 divided by 2 is 14.5. And essentially now what we're saying is that each phase has a 14.5 kW demand on it. Since we have three phases, if I multiply that times 3, I end up with 43.5. And so 43.5 kW would then be the equivalent demand on that three-phase service for those ranges. Now I know this seems kind of complicated, but, and this one in particular, has a, a cheat sheet already in the book for it. Um, if you will turn to page 65, just flip one page back from your table. On the right-hand column, just below that table for dryers, you'll see a paragraph that starts with rated in excess of one and three-quarter kW. See that? That bottom little paragraph there says that we're two or more single-phase rangers supplied by a three-phase four-wire service or feeder. The total load should be calculated on the basis of twice the maximum number connects between any two phases. So this is the uh, paragraph that uh, instructs us to do all this. Okay? If you write a note. For yourself, see page 809, right underneath that paragraph. Just put it in black ink, just put see page 809. Okay? 
If you turn back real quick and flip over to page 809, you'll see that in Annex D we have a blow-by-blow, step-by-step, exact copy of what we just did on the board. So just take your highlighter. You'll see that on that right-hand column there, kind of in the middle of the page, you have both examples. You have the 20, uh, 20 dwelling units, 10 with ranges, and the minimum size main feeder, that's house load for 40 dwelling units, 20 with ranges. So both your variations are there. I just take my highlighter and highlight both those. Highlight the equivalent three-phase load for the 10 ranges is 34,500 VA. And then highlight the equivalent three-phase load for the 20 ranges is 43,500 VA, which is what we have here on this one. see kind of the steps are the exact same thing that we just did. Take the maximum number between any two phase legs, which in this case was seven. Multiply that by two and then get your table demand, with, which was 29,000. Divide that by two for a single phase equivalent at 14.5 and then multiply that times three to capture all three phases. Okay. That is uh, the way to, to tell that's the question that you're dealing with is going to be uh, looking for the three phase four wire uh, description of your service. Okay. One of them at 10 kW, uh, three of them at 12 kW, four of them, I believe, at 14 kW. One, three, seven, eight, and one more additional one at either nine or something. I want to say it's a nine kW. All right. So if you go back to your table on uh, page 66, under note two, there's a little instruction that tells us how we deal with ranges of unequal ratings. Over eight and three quarters through 27, if you have unequal ratings, for ranges individually rated at more than that, but none exceeding 27, the average value shall be calculated by adding the ratings together to obtain the total connected load, using 12 kW for any range rated less than 12 kW, and dividing the total number of ranges. Then the maximum demand in column C should be increased 5% for each kilowatt or major fraction thereof. Now, earlier you had said something about uh, me calculating multiple ranges like that 9 and that 11 differently than you had done, right? And the reason why we have to do note two here is we have one that's definitely off the chart, and then we've got the other three that are on the chart. Now, if we did your, if we did the nine and eleven that we did yesterday, if you add these together and divide them by two, you're still going to have ten kW ranges. Now, the instruction on that note says to increase this to twelve, right? The little paragraph that we just saw in the bottom. Any range less than 12 kW increase it. So really what I have is 23 divided by 2, which is going to be uh, 11.5, right? Either way, I'm still below that 12 kW limit of the chart, so I'm still going to have two ranges, 11 kW, still going to be 11 kW. There's not really, I mean, you can do it either way. It still ends up with the same answer provided. Now the ranges are off the chart. When they go off the chart like that, you have to get an equivalent average. First, what I was saying yesterday, if you had a 9 kW range and a 11 kW range, you simply have two ranges under column C, two ranges of demand loads 11. But this note 2 tells you you can do it, uh, it says you shall do it, uh, take an average, and before you take the average, make sure you increase it to 12 on anything below that. So if you have a 10 kW here, really what you have is what? 12. 12. I'm going to change that to a 12. I'm also going to change this to a 12. And then that gives us 12 kW, 36 kW, um, 56 kW, and 12 kW. Let me add those up for me. Let me use this calculator to look better. Anybody, uh, any different? Agreed? 
All right, now we have a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine ranges in that total group. 116,000 divided by nine is what? 12.88. So we have nine ranges at 12.88. Nine ranges on the table under column C would have an equivalent demand load or have, would have a demand load of 24 kW. So this 24 kW would be fine if we were exactly at 12 kW on each one of those nine ranges. But since we have the 0.88, we have to increase that demand load by 5% for each kW we go beyond the chart. So it's really a, it's a reference to note uh, two and then going back to referencing note one as well because you have to increase that demand load. So that 24 kW actually has to be bumped up by 5%. And when you're multiplying percents like that, guys, just put a one in front of it. So you do 1.05 in your calculator, and that gives you 100% of the original number here plus the percentage in this case is 5%. So if you put in your calculator 1.05, 24 times 1.05 is what? 25.2. 25.2? If you did it individually, if you took 24 kW times 0.05, then you'd have to then turn around and add the 24 kW back. So it's just a little short. Anybody have any questions on this one?